The utility sink in my basement shop has an unusual situation. First, it sets on a concrete pedestal, which was originally intended by the previous owners of my house to put their washing machine on. So there are already hot and cold uh, taps on the wall up above it, and um, there's a sewer line near it so they could run the discharge from the washing machine up into it. I have repurposed those hot and cold water lines and the hook up to the sewer line with this utility sink and a Symer uh, lift pump. Not one intended for sewage, just for other water. So it uh, lifts it up about one story so it can go into the, into the sewer in the house. Um, anyway, I need to move that sink periodically because it's in the way for certain things I need to do in the shop. And so I set it up so the legs of the utility sink have aluminum brackets on them and the legs were cut shorter because of the fact that the sink is sitting up on a concrete pedestal. And uh, then I can anchor into um, stainless steel concrete anchors with stainless steel screws. I can anchor the four legs to the concrete pedestal but easily unscrew them to move the sink. The Symer lift pump sits on the floor next to the concrete pedestal and it's at an ideal height to receive the, the uh, drain line from the sink. Uh, and there is a quick release um, union on the, on the pipe so I can quickly detach that line. And then I use long washing machine hoses to go from the hot and cold taps on the wall up around underneath the utility sink and into the, uh, into the faucet on the utility sink. So with that background, uh, I eventually realized that the old fixture, which I had on the utility sink for 20 plus years, had seen its days come and go and uh, I re decided to replace it with a new one. And this one is a utility pull-out faucet. Uh, which I just picked up at Ace Hardware. It's all made out of plastic, of course. There's probably hardly any metal in it, but it's metalized to look like chrome. And uh, I installed the first one, and that's what's in these pictures, but it had a tiny leak that came up from underneath the body. I think the, the mixing manifold had a defect in it, a small crack or something, that it wasn't dripping out, but it definitely made a puddle under the sink. And after you know a week of that going on, it would overspill the pedestal and go onto the floor. And you know, I come trotting down my basement stairs, which come down right next to the sink, and I'd hit that wet spot, and almost you know my feet would almost slide out from under me. It was a hazard. So I uh, called the company that made the um, the new faucet, and they sent me a replacement free of charge. And this time I decided I was going to hook it up and test it before I installed it on the sink. And what follows is a combination of slideshow and video of the process. And things I changed and things I learned in the, pro in the process of doing it. So here's after I've detached the utility sink's legs from the concrete pedestal and put it down on the floor. You can see the drain line sticking out from under the sink. And if you look carefully, you can almost see the place on the Symer lift pump where it connects into. And uh, well, there's a lot of dirt on that pedestal I need to clean up. And you can see how the long, hot and cold washing machine hoses allow it to be moved way over. Or I can move it off to the right as well. Uh, but this gives me a good position to be able to work on the faucet uh, while the sink is still close to its hookups. Since the washing machine hoses use garden hose type, I believe they're three quarter inch fittings, I needed to adapt the threaded fittings on the bottom of the faucet, which are intended for, I think it's half inch, uh, faucet thread, as it's called. And uh, to do that originally with the old fixture and then with the, the faulty new fixture, which is what's shown here, I used these uh, three-quarter inch to half inch brass adapters. And that worked well for the first one, but 
uh, the plastic on the first one was much heavier than on this newer one, and I was worried that maybe just threading those on enough to be tight, you know, and that's including Teflon tape under the threads, uh, that that might contribute to cracking the plastic. So the threaded fittings on these sinks now are intended for half-inch faucet thread fittings. That's what they're really set up for. And even the shape of the bottom of these threaded pieces coming down out of the faucet is intended for the specially shaped rubber gasket that's part of those half-inch faucet fittings. So what I show in this picture is not ideal and I decided to improve it the second time around. So I picked these up at the local Ace Hardware. They're three-quarter inch male hose thread to half-inch male pipe thread, which I was advised was the same thing as half-inch faucet thread. The first thing I did was thread the new adapters onto the ends of the washing machine hoses, as shown here. I don't seem to have taken a picture of the um, faucet threaded half-inch hoses that I bought at the hardware store. Two of them, they're something on the order of 8 or 10 inches long, but this picture shows the way the rubber gasket inside of them is set up. It's not sealing the threads, it's sealing the internal pipe to where it joins the bottom of a sink fitting. Here's what the outside of that fitting on the faucet hose looks like. So then I threaded both of these um, faucet hoses onto the adapters which go to the garden hoses or rather the washing machine hoses. While we're on this photo you can see just off to the left of the washing machine hose fittings one of the anchors that's in the concrete which receives the stainless steel screws that hold the legs down to the concrete pedestal. Here's the box that the new faucet came in, uh, done by Homeworks Worldwide, based in Lake Bluff, Illinois, very close to me. And uh, this is the model number, the 331U525. Seems like a decent product. Um, uses washerless cartridges. Ah, made in Taiwan, the mark of quality. I always consider if it's Taiwan, it's probably a notch or two above the things made in mainland China. Maybe that's wrong, but that's just my impression. There's the box opened up with the main assembly in a plastic bag and then the hand nozzle uh, separately. And then I threaded the short lengths of faucet hose onto the bottom of the fixtures on the new faucet without it being mounted to the sink, just to test for leaks. All right, I'm doing a leak check here. Um, making sure these guys, I can't detect any moisture around them, so I don't think they're leaking, but I put a fresh piece of paper towel down there. If it doesn't catch any moisture in about 10 minutes, then I'll figure no leaks. And, um, <clears throat> Likewise, one under there. I thought that might be the most likely place for a leak, but so far um, it seems to be okay. And in case anything leaks from here, here, or here, it should be picked up on that paper towel down there. So I'll give it about 10 minutes. And if everything's good, then I'm going to put the sink back and connect up its sewer line or its drain line, it's not really into the sewer here, um, and then rebolt the legs to the pedestal and hopefully the job will be done.
so the job is done. I didn't find any leaks. And you already saw how the faucet can pull out or the nozzle can pull out on a hose. And the nozzle will give you either a normal stream of water or a spray pattern, which is useful for rinsing things off. And I use this sink a lot for soaking and scrubbing dirty parts of equipment I'm working on. So um, that's a useful pattern to have. And uh, there it is with the sink with its legs bolted back down to the floor. You can see typical screw there and the uh, aluminum bracket that was affixed to the legs with a rivet. And I also have the legs screwed with stainless steel screws into the bottom of the sink because otherwise they drop off when I try to move the sink. So that's working. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. Um, there's a vent line on this Symer lift pump because I have to move the pump a little bit sideways to disengage this quick release union. Um, I have to use a flexible uh, hose here going up to the uh, sewer line where it uh, goes in up there up in above the suspended ceiling um, and I replace that about every 10 years but um, I've never had a problem with it and when the village inspector came out to check out my plumbing work after I'd connected the city water from my well he came over and looked at this scratched his head and said yeah you're not using that for sewage. You're not dumping sewage in your sink. Yeah, that's okay. Don't have anything to say about it. But anyway, um, it does have a vent line that goes in to um, the vent, but in order this to move sideways, I have a fitting up above the ceiling that has enough play in it. I just stick it together. It's not glued. Yeah, it's just up here so I can pull this down. It's got enough play in the pipe where it just fits down onto there and it stays and then that provides the ventilation for this otherwise enclosed Symer pump which is coated with dust but darned if I'm going to bother cleaning it. And uh, it's been about an hour since I put the sink back and I felt around underneath it. It seems bone dry so I'm sure I fixed the leaking problem. So job complete. And with all the accoutrements <laughs> that I usually have on here like my uh, what is that stuff? Um, Gojo for cleaning my hands if they're a little greasy and my pump jar of just liquid hand soap and my plug when I want to fill this sink up I, um, when I have a sink full of water here I cannot get this plug to go up with the little cheap metal ring they put on here normally so I put on a piece of much heavier wire this actually came from one of those lawn stakes like you'd stick into the ground if you were uh, marking where a underground water line was or something it's very stiff wire um, and I just stuck one through there and made something I can get a screwdriver under and pry this up when I need to drain the sink. That seems to work pretty well. And I got my main scrubber that I use for cleaning equipment when it's been given a bath here. And then a small scrubbing, like a higher quality version of a toothbrush with stiffer bristles. That's for getting into the nooks and crannies. And then I have several standard uh, straight simple toothbrushes which I buy from um, well this one yeah it's plain toothbrush.com that's plain dash toothbrush.com you can't even go into a regular store anymore and buy normal straight toothbrushes that's why that business exists um, also very good for cleaning stuff and also for just cleaning under my fingernails if I've been doing dirty work. And then here's a more common example of what grocery stores and drug stores sell. It's not horrible, but it's not 
as good as these things are for cleaning most equipment. One thing that I want to do to improve this is these toothbrushes tend to get knocked on the floor a lot so I want to get a um, like you'd put in the bathroom to hang toothbrushes I need to uh, get or make something along those lines further improvement and that means it's about time to reinstate my several cans of chemicals. What do I have here? MEK, methyl ethyl ketone. Don't use it much, but it comes in handy. Denatured alcohol, just normal paint thinner, um, and um, that's actually um, mineral spirits is what it is. And then of course acetone. And I would have alcohol in that, but I use so much isopropyl alcohol that instead I buy it by the box. I usually buy the Tech Spray brand, but this is just a lot better for my needs. Um, it has the isopropyl alcohol in it, and I always have a measuring cup down here I just keep there. And you may have seen in some of the other parts of this video this snaky line that goes through this dirty part of the floor. It's hard to clean behind there. That's actually the drain line for my air conditioner. It crosses the floor here and runs around there and then goes back around the workbench and eventually makes its way into the sump way back there. It actually works well that way. And you may ask why is there this um, thing here. This goes way back this is from before I put the utility sink in here over 20 years ago when I wanted to wash things out I just had a like a big plastic storage tub the kind that has a you know lid and you store clothes in it or something during the off season and that sat up here and I just cut a hole in the bottom of it and put in a um, a normal fitting like you'd put in the bottom of a sink and then had that going to a short length of PVC pipe and that was positioned over this fitting so it would just drip into there whenever I wanted to drain that basin and then I just had um, instead of the washing machine hoses coming from the wall fixtures I had um, just a, a mixer mounted up there um, so it was just a manifold that would mix the hot and the cold and I never used it that way and you're not really supposed to do that according to code but um, I just used it for cold water anyway so I'd turn the cold water on it would run into the manifold run down a hose that just had a little nozzle on the end of it that I could you know spray water into that plastic basin and then pull the plug on it and let it drain into here and that would just run through the uh, condensate line into the sump and I had a screen over it so the bugs wouldn't make their nests inside um, there. But then when I went to this utility sink, I just left that thing there. And a uh, plumber came in here and he said, oh, that's a good idea. He said, that's a pretty long condensate drain line. It probably doesn't hurt it at all to have a, a vent midway along the line. So I leave it there. It's grody and dirty down there. It's not an area that I ever clean. My next project, I've got paint cans and things galore all over the place that I need to find a much better place to organize and store them. They're really getting in the way. I've got another cluster like that over by my milling machine and another cluster somewhere else. It's a cluster, in other words. All right, enough for this. And uh, by the way, just so since I'm sharing information here, um, I also keep my temporary pail that I use for various things right in this area and my um, dust, what do you call these things, a dust brush and pan 
whatever those things are called. And uh, these days I buy almost all my liquid detergents, except for laundry detergent, from this Sun and Earth brand. I buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's inexpensive, it's readily available, proudly made in the USA, and they have all these different products that can come in the same bottle. All-purpose cleaner, all-purpose cleaner concentrate, li liquid fabric softener, floor cleaner, glass cleaner, laundry detergent, hand soap, dish soap, fruit and veggie wash, other, and they just fill in whichever one it is. So you can see these guys aren't spending a lot of money on marketing or individual labeling and so on. Um, and then you can get it in different scentings too. I always get the unscented. And I use this for uh, hand soap, I use it for dishwashing soap, and uh, I also have an all-purpose cleaner version of it, and I just have these um, bottles, whatever they store. Yeah, it's one gallon. So keep that down here too so I can refill that thing. <laughs> 